today's handout, uh, there, are, there, are, there are two new developments I want to point out, one of which is uh, yesterday we learned that the jittery, jittery companies stash cash, and the first line of the news article is, stunned by the financial crisis, companies are holding more cash, a greater percentage of assets in cash than any time in the past 40 years. Now, what this, what this means is that excess cash uh, will attempt to be invested short term in the market. Um, and basically, this is more fuel for the fire of the uh, carry trade uh, that Adam Fisher uh, discussed uh, in class uh, last week for us. Uh, we basically, where we summarize the carry trade, where it's being financed, is U.S. financial institutions with excess cash uh, willing to lend funds into the repo market on, on an overnight basis creating a heck of a lot of liquidity, uh, which is then used in turn by hedge funds or other investors who borrow the, the funds at a very exceedingly low interest rate. Now we have another supply source of excess cash, which is the U.S. corporations. That money has been flowing on a leverage basis into the U.S. equity market, the U.S. Uh, fixed income markets, and moreover, it has also moved into the emerging nations. And with a side effect, and the side effect is uh, an interesting perspective that has been po pointed out by Rubini in his article last week, which uh, attracted a great deal of attention in the Financial Times, called the mother of all carry trades faces an inevitable bust. So basically the carry trade royally financed with the excess liquidity of U.S. financial institutions is being used by financial leveragers to buy assets not only in the United States, but also their other favorite location for purchasing assets uh, are the emerging nations because the emerging nations so far have turned the corner and have progressed further and faster than the United States in economic recovery. Now it turns out, well the process is not unlike what we discussed before and, and, and was in the bond price exercise, uh, if you borrow, it turns out that the dollar being the cheapest source of money, and along with the UK probably as well, the leveragers borrow in dollars. And then if they wish to invest in the emerging nations, they convert from the dollar to the real, which is their currency, And for example. <coughs> and uh, then having purchased the real, they turn around and purchase fixed income or equities um, and, and live on the margin of difference, all on borrowed money. Now, so far it's worked out wonderfully well because the price of the dollar keeps going down and conversely, the price of the real is rising. So for the financial leveragers who have entered this market, they borrowed in dollars, invested in real, now they're experiencing a capital gain in the real as well as in a capital gain in the Brazilian securities they purchased. Now, this is wonderful while it continues, and if you have a position, and particularly an early position in the real, because there's so much more hedge fund money piling in behind you, continuing to push the currency up that you're, that you're investing in, and continuing to push upward the price of the financial securities you're investing in. Uh, he cites, for example, uh, 20, uh, 70 to 80 percent gains by, uh, by the uh, hedge fund uh, by the uh, hedge fund uh, managers from this kind of trade. There is a problem though. The question is where is the end, where is the end, uh, where is the bust behind this bubble? It has created a bubble and we're wondering where and, and, and what would possibly give rise to the asset bubble that's being created by this excess U.S. liquidity that's fanning out across the world. Where, what, what would be the pin that would prick the bubble and cause the burst of the bubble? And one possibility we talked about last week, of course, is the, is the Federal Reserve, quote, exiting, namely causing monetary conditions in the funding country to get tight. But it turns out that what Rubini points out is there's another mechanism that could conceivably could cause the carry trade to implode. And that is, as the funds are borrowed in the U.S. by the hedge fund managers, converted to real, the real appreciates. The dollar depreciates and the real appreciates. Now this ends up causing problems in the emerging nations in general, Brazil in particular, but the emerging nations in general, where so much of the capital is being directed because as the capital flows